everybody. I'm here with Kerry Bracco, the owner of Bracco Quality Home Furnishings. Kerry, how you doing? Not too bad. Yourself, Jeff? I'm good, sir. I'm under the circumstances. So, Kerry, can you just tell us a little bit about just kind of the current, you know, uh, lay of the land for you guys? Well, it's, uh, you know, obviously, you know, it, it's been a difficult time, uh, both with the uh, virus and the energy sector and, and everything that's kind of been hitting us square in the head. And uh, so we, we got a quiet zone. Uh, you know, our store is presently shut down, but we are taking appointments and talking to people via the internet and, uh, you know, trying to take care of our, our customers that we have business with. And uh, so overall, I mean, we, we, there's, there's very few of us. I mean, obviously, we've had to do some of the temporary laying off. And, uh, you know, as a local business here, I mean, that, that rips apart people more than anything is when you have to kind of tell people that, uh, you know, there's not really a place right now. And so, we, you know, I'm in the store quite a bit by myself with uh, our controller and, and, and one other person. And, you know, we're trying to kind of revamp and look at all the different things that, to survive. I guess the first thing we all have to really look hard at is survival. Gary, tell us a little bit about the background of your company. I mean, you guys have been around for years. What do you guys do and kind of what's the, what's the brief history on it? Well, you know, originally this, the store was, uh, uh, taken over by our family. Uh, oh, it goes back to 1982, 83. So we're, we're getting up around 41 years that the store has been avail been open. And I, I kind of call it a decade sort of thing. Initially it was the Oak shop and then it went to the Bracco brothers Oak shop. And then it went to Bracco brothers, uh, you know, quality furnishings and, you know, slowly it's moved in every decade. We've kind of had to make some flexible changes. And so we've kind of gone from standing on the chairs where we just did tables and chairs to adding interior design and adding upholstery and leather. And, and now we'll be, you know, hopefully in the future be opening up a kind of a Bracco sleeps and uh, that'll be dealing directly with going toe to toe with a lot of the big guys and, you know, mattresses and that sort of thing. So we've evolved into a full line furniture store with the same sort of thought pattern, uh, quality and service. And, uh, and we have always been capable of giving unique, uh, when I say unique, you know, we can get seven different woods, different stains, you know, all the different fabrics, different leathers. So we've always tried to search out and find a, a better value for the consumer out there with some personalized service. Nice. And, and I mean, you mentioned that, I mean, right now, basically with the downturn, the energy sector, the COVID-19, I mean, you guys are a local business. And I mean, just, can you talk a bit about that? You're, you're up against the big guys and online services. What does it mean to support local business like yours? Well, I think, you know, personally, I, I, I you know, I make a point of always buying local and finding restaurants that are local and finding, you know, as much as I humanly can, uh, you know, whether it's a barbecue place down around the street here or, I've always been a big local component as well as, you know, been heavily involved in the community and whether it's youth sports or, uh, you know, school activities and all that stuff. I, you know, I tend to believe in the local guys because I always see the local guys, you know, involved in, you know, whether it's little Johnny's baseball team sponsorship or the hockey teams or soccer, you know, uh, you know, and it could be guys like beat the plumber who's out there pounding away. Uh, you know, I see his local or Shane Holmes, uh, you know, these are all guys that have put a lot of community time in and not only sponsoring and being very good community guys, but they're part of the, I guess, the, the local involvement. And so, you know, a store with, you know, a name like ours, the, you know, the Bracco brothers or Bracco, uh, you know, our, our work in the community has always been uh, the networking, you know, part of being part of the community is that I've always believed that if you, you know, take care of the community and help them out as much as you humanly can, then they will reciprocate. And I think it's important that all the local people do support local people because they're usually the ones that step up and help in the fundraising events and help in all the, you know, foundations and all the charities. You know, it's interesting the names you see all the time. Uh, and, and we do compete. You know, the local people are competing with big brand stores that, I don't see as much in the local community. So nothing against them because I'm sure they do their big philanthropic stuff too. But, uh, you know, community local 
minded, uh, you know, businesses, I think are front and center a lot more than, you know, a lot of our big competitors, and especially the online guys. Right. Well, you know what, and, and I've known you for years, and, and I mean, you're a, you're a huge supporter of Calgary, of Alberta, of Canada, and I think right now that's the whole idea of this campaign is that we need to stand up as Alberta business leaders and, and support local and encourage people to support local in order to get us out of this current circumstances. And so um, any, any advice you'd have for other business leaders that are out there, what could they be doing to kind of deal with the, the double whammy that we've had here in the province? Well, I, I put it in two different categories. Mentally, you know, as a business owner, you got to keep yourself healthy and whatever it takes, uh, you know, sometimes you wake up and you feel like you've been punched in the head about six times, but uh, if you can get by that and try and remain positive and, and just re-energize what made you successful throughout all these years, because we've all had to survive all sorts of different things. And I think there's the mental capacity of the business owner that's vital that, you know, whatever outlet you need to release, you go and do that release and maybe going for a walk or maybe, you know, having a drink of, uh, you know, Kool-Aid or whatever it is, you know, keep yourself mentally, you know, because you, you got to make decisions right now at this time that are going to affect you, you know, even more so short-term, mid-term and long-term. And if you're not feeling up to it or you're, you're mentally, you know, you're worn out, because that's really what this is doing. It's tiring us out mentally, because most people who are all small business and what do they do 24-7? They think. And they continue to think, and and it is a tiring thing. And uh, you know, a lot of people, the only people who really know what I'm talking about are the people that are small, medium-sized business owners that you know go through this. And then there's the operational part, which is the you know I call it uh, how you are going to survive. And then what does it mean? Maybe it's a time right now to start looking at your your operation and reevaluating all of your expenses because you have to do that anyways. And then on a go-forward basis. How can you become more profitable? I mean, we don't know what's going to happen even once this thing, you know, settles down with the virus and then the energy sector, the oil prices. I mean, those are things we can't control. So try not to drive yourself crazy asking questions that there are no answers for right now. Well, you know what? I think you're bang on. I think that's whatever you, like you're right, any business leader that's out there, small business owner, whether they're in a big company, we generally don't shut things off because it's not a nine to five job. It's a 24 seven, you know, pedal to the metal. And, uh, and it is, you're right. It's exhausting. And especially for us here in Alberta and Saskatchewan, but Alberta, it's been, we're going on five years now. Oh, it, and it might even be longer than that. I think, you know, you know, people who really look at it, you know, hardcore and, and most of us do and most small, medium sized businesses and local guys, you know, we're concerned about how our city operates. We're concerned about our province. We're concerned about our federal government because, you know, you know, a couple big errors in their judgment, and it it could mean years and years more of work, or it could be, you know, instead of five day weeks, it becomes seven day weeks, and uh, you know, it's it's not it's not a, the healthiest thing right now. That's for sure. So, you know, optimism. You got to stay optimistic and just positive and and I think you know what you're doing right here is is very important because you know everybody will know that everybody's kind of in the same sort of boat and uh, it's not like if you talk to anybody uh they're they're not thinking the same things you're thinking you know and, and that's the one thing I see consistently with everybody that we get on to this in it together campaign is that it's really it's the same thing I mean everybody's concerned everybody gets those moments of feeling you know alone and uh so it, it, that's just it. And we're wanting to kind of pull that whole province together. Um, any other last comments you'd have, Kerry? I mean, I appreciate you taking the time here. I, I you know, I just hang in there, everybody. And, uh, you know, try and continue to create some more networking. I think that uh, one of the things we probably don't do as well as we all would like is that we don't stay in touch with the people we should and find ways to, uh, you know, network and, and join in together to, to overcome some of the big beasts, which is, you know, a lot of times in retail specifically, you know, we are fighting an endless battle against, uh, you know, the internet and also uh, some of the big box stores. And so, you know, the more people you know, the more you're going to sell. And uh, 
that in my world is I got to find a way to meet more people and their friends and their family. And, uh, you know, the continuous, whether it's social media or just something like this, uh, we just got to keep hammering away. Perfect, sir. That's great. Kerry, thanks and uh, stay safe. And we'll definitely chat down the road here. Okay. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks.